Hello, I'm Evan Sanchez, and I'm the Educator Support Manager here at the Science Penguin. Today, I'm going to do a video on how you can utilize your science spiral reviews in your classroom. If you're a third grade teacher, fourth grade teacher, or even a fifth grade teacher, we have spiral reviews made for your grade levels. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that I used in my classroom to help you stay organized and also to make your students successful. Stay tuned. All right, so we're going to talk about the spiral reviews. I'm going to use the fifth grade as an example, but even if you teach third grade, fourth grade, or even the fifth grade NGSS standards, you're going to see the same type of layout when you're doing your spiral reviews. So let's dive in a little bit more. As we know with our students, when we teach them concepts, we always want to consistently spiral back so that way we know that they are getting true mastery of their standards. What I love about this in spiral review is, is my students get exposed to four different questions for the week. And in the fifth grade science by review, we have 12 topics that actually get visited 10 times over the 30 weeks. That may vary for your third grade and your fourth grade and your fifth grade NGSS standards. But again, you're going to see that they're going to constantly get revisitation of those standards. Another thing that I like about it is when you start at the very beginning, the spiral reviews give your students a lot of background information. Typically, you'll have a lot more so review of what they should have had from the grade level before. And then also what I like is, is there are questions that are topics that I haven't even taught at this point of the year in fifth grade that comes a lot later. So it's almost a way for me to pre-assess what do my students already know prior to me teaching it. So we do have different format options. Some people do it as a booklet, some do weekly printing, maybe put in a folder or even assign it digitally. We do have links uh, below that you'll be able to use if you purchase this product um, or if you already have it, that you can do it digitally where you can sign it like through Google Classroom or you can give them a copy of Google Slides. Some options, some people use this as a warm up. That's what I personally use, and I'm going to guide you on how I did that. Some use this as a weekly review, and some use this as homework. So there's a lot of different options that you can go through uh, depending on your needs. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and scroll on down until we see our first spiral review option. So again, you can kind of see that you have two questions on the front. And then there are two other questions on the back. So you could always do them one a day. That's kind of an option that I usually do in my classroom. Students will solve it. They'll show their strategies. And then I'm going to show you some tips along the way that I use with my students. Again, you can notice that like forms of energy, they really give the students a lot of background information to hopefully lead them to the answer. And like I mentioned before, with traits and behaviors and landforms, that usually comes a lot later in the year for me to teach. These are ways for me to start pre-assessing what they know. And it's also kind of nice whenever we go over a topic later in the year, the students go, oh yeah, I remember us talking about that in spiral review. So that's always refreshing when we see that. All right, so that's kind of a glimpse of what is here. I'm now going to show you how I organize my spiral reviews and kind of the daily setup that I use with my students. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I organize my teacher binder, how my students keep organized with their science spiral reviews, and the process that we take each day whenever we go through them. So for my teacher binder, I just printed off the cover page of my spiral review product. Um, I just use a one inch binder, doesn't need to be really thick. On the right side, what I do is, is I copy all of the answer keys so that way I have them available, hole punch them, keep them on the right whenever I need to reference from them. When it comes to my spiral reviews, I keep them all on the left side. And what I do is, is I do print them off um, so that they come out double-sided. I want my students to only have one page a week that they have to keep up with. And so when we do it double-sided, we'll have two questions on the front and then we'll have the two questions on the back. Whenever we, I'm done copying that um, science spiral review for the week, I just slide it to the back. And that way I know that my next week when it's time for me to make copies, I've got science file review number two ready to go. And sometimes I might do even multiples um, so I don't have to do it week by week. So that's kind of a tip that I use for keeping everything organized in a binder for myself. 
for my students, what I have done in the past is, is they have a folder. Um, you don't have to have it where they have brads in it. Um, more so a pocket folder is just fine. So what I do is, is they keep their science spiral reviews on the left side of their pocket. We really talk about keeping everything on the left with spiral reviews. When it comes to the right side, I usually dedicate this for maybe it's like something we need to glue in our notebook, or maybe this is something where we're tracking data over the year of how they did from one unit test to the next. So I kind of keep it like, you know, things that we're working on, growing on, uh, goal setting type stuff. While on this side, we really dedicate it strictly for science spiral reviews. When we are done with the science spiral review for the week, they just keep it in their folder. And when we get a brand new one the following week, I always tell them put it right on top. So that way you know that that's the one that you need to you know take out as soon as you get started with class because you know sometimes with kids they're trying to shuffle and try to find it so i always train them keep it on the top and that's always kept them very well organized so let me kind of guide you on how i do that with my class each day so when my students come in they see on the screen the things that they need to do typically it's especially on a monday go pick up the spiral review for the week pick up your folder go pick up your journal. And I have them laid out on two different tables, like the journals, I've got the uh, folders on another table, and then usually a desk or something for science file reviews, especially on Mondays. Um, but the remainder of the week, they just know, come in, grab my folder, grab my journal, write in my planner what we're doing, and get straight to science file reviews. So they'll take it out, and they'll work on the question of the day. So, things that I do. I like doing this where it's the very first five minutes of class because they know that this is kind of our structure. It starts out very quietly and I'm able to kind of get things ready or prepared if I need it, but most of the time I'm doing what I call aggressive lapping. And what I mean by that is, is I go around and I'm watching the students as they are working through the problem. We talk about various strategies that we use on, you know, how we solve the problem. I've done things where we, you know, underline the question, we'll box keywords, things of that nature. When it's like a multiple choice, I know that some teachers, they haven't put reasoning for each of the answer choices. For my students personally, what I've done is I tell them to circle the right answer and tell me why you chose that as a, the correct answer. Um, especially with us now, if, for people that are taking the STAR test here in Texas, and we are you know, doing it virtually through computers, them taking all the time to do A, B, C, D and putting all reasoning of why it's right and why it's wrong, I feel that that's going to just boggle too much time um, and just having them really focus in on why did I choose the answer that I went with is a good strategy. I like using it on paper because, again, not that I don't want them to be used to the computer version, they are doing very well with applying what they have on paper to then what they're going to apply through the computer. So what I do for aggressive lapping, I'll be watching the kids as they're filling out this information and I use a coding system. So for instance, if I see that the student got the right answer and they showed me great thinking, like they show me the strategies that we're going to use, I'm gonna go put a check on their paper. Good job, you did a great job. Now, if I see that they got the answer, but I'm just not seeing any kind of reasoning or why they chose that answer. I go around and I put a little question mark like, hey, can you show me how you got to your answer? With If they get it wrong, I don't like to put an X on their paper and I definitely don't use a color that's red. I use any color but red. Um, what I do is, is I just kind of come by and say, hey, check that again. I want you to look at that problem one more time. And then if I see something like, whoa, I love what they thought. They came up with a cool idea to remember that. I put a little star next to their paper so that way when we have our class discussion, then they're able to share something that they did. They'll either come up to the screen to, to you know, model it or I'll do it for them in front of the class and they just kind of talk me through what they did. Again, it's just a great way to have peers see 
another way of thinking because I tell my students all the time, not everybody is going to have the same reasoning. You know, you're not going to all be robots where you have the same reason for it. So it's kind of nice to see the beauty of, you know, the variety of ways that they can apply to their answers. So I am doing these marks as I'm walking around the room. I give my students about five minutes. I set a timer for five minutes. I'm lapping around, going, 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 so that way I can check, 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 check really quick and then see common misconceptions. So if I see, man, everybody's got that right, it's a great visual for me to know pretty well there. Like, I don't need to spend a lot of time with that. My students have that pretty well mastered. But if I'm seeing, ooh, this area needs a little bit more time or I'm seeing these group of students are consistently missing, hey, that's going to be my small group time. So. I'm what I call again is I call it aggressive lapping and I'm just going around and making these little codes. I even have a poster in my room that has what they mean so that way students can see like, ooh, if I got a check, I got it right, question mark, star in a circle. It's also good for administrators to see if they're doing a walkthrough um, to know, hey, what are those little codes when you're, you know, going around the room. So I love that strategy and my kids are much more accountable of wanting to really show their ideas and thoughts along the process. So after those five minutes pass, then I typically have maybe a student read out the question for us. We go over the strategies together. What should we have done? Should we have underlined the question? Whatever works in your classroom. And then um, we'll share out. I'll say, okay, if you had a star next to your name, can you raise your hand and I want you to, you know, talk me through or I'm going to have you come up here and show what you did. I want the others to see that. And so it's a quick discussion. So no more than 10 minutes um, am I using in my class period to go over a spiral review question. Um, again, it's a great resource and I know that just by hitting these topics continually over the year is going to make them much more confident. I'm thinking about you third grade and fourth grade teachers who may not even have a test for science. If you start your day with this when you're beginning your science block period, maybe you ran out of time and you didn't get all of the teaks mastered. You're at least touching and covering some points with your students so that way when they go from third to fourth and when they go from fourth to fifth, there's not going to be as much of a gap and at least we can expose our kids to these things along the way. So that's a little bit of how I do spiral review. Again, I like to do it within my classroom, but you are more than welcome to do it as a homework assignment that they turn at the end of the week. Maybe you spend on Friday where they do all four questions. You can cater it to whatever need that you want. I hope this was helpful for you, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us, and we will be more than happy to help you.